Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today, we're making and pairing a root beer float with fish tacos from I Love You Man. If you haven't seen I Love You Man, it's a 2009 bromantic comedy co-written and directed by John Hamburg, which follows Peter Clavin, a Los Angeles-based real estate agent who recently got engaged to his girlfriend Zoe. The only problem is Peter has no no real guy friends to be his best man. A troubling fact that he overhears Zoe's friends discussing as Peter brings them a sweet treat. I made you guys some root beer floats. Oh, oh, Peter, are those chocolate straws? Uh, yeah, pirouettes. Pepperidge Farm. Luckily, at his open house for former Hulk Lou Ferrigno, Peter meets Sidney Fife, and the two go on a mandate together to real-life Venice Beach restaurant James Beach, which is famous for one particular food. This place has the best fish tacos in the world, literally ranked. You gotta have one. But before we get to our fish tacos, we'll first start by making some pickled vegetables that will go along with them, which starts in a saucepan to which we'll add a half a cup of white or white wine vinegar, followed by an equal amount of water. Then we'll bring this liquid up to a boil, and as it heats up, we'll first add a drizzle of oil, followed by some black peppercorns, in addition to a few bay leaves, as well as a few cloves of peeled and smashed garlic, and finally some Mexican oregano. Once this mix comes to to a boil, we will then add two carrots sliced up like so, followed by a quarter of a white onion, as well as some sliced jalapenos. After which, we're gonna add an ingredient that James Beach adds to their pickled vegetables, not typically common in most Mexican style pickled veggies, some cauliflower. Then, as I mixed this all together, I realized I needed a bit more of each of our liquids, so I added equal parts more vinegar and water and brought the veggies back up to a boil before reducing it to a simmer and giving Giving it another stir, we'll see those jalapenos become darker, and then we'll take our veggies off the heat and allow them to cool completely before grabbing a clean jar and transferring the pickles and their brine into the jar where they will continue to pickle in the fridge. And while they do, we'll make our next bit of accoutrement, a salsa verde, which starts with a pot of boiling water, to which we'll add three cloves of garlic, followed by a quarter of a white onion, both of which will cook on their own for a few minutes before then adding two jalapenos, stems cut off, as well as two serrano peppers, and then we'll cook this for another few minutes before then adding one pound of tomatillos, and we want to cover and cook these tomatillos until the color becomes slightly faded the way the peppers already are. And once our tomatillos reach that point, we are then going to take the pot off the heat and we are going to transfer these vegetables to a blender. But before we blend them, we're first going to add a little bit of salt, followed by one clove of fresh garlic, and as well as a quarter cup of our boiling liquid. And then we're just gonna blend this all together, after which we'll see that it already looks pretty good. But now we need to let this salsa cool, and after it has cooled, we will then add a bushel of fresh cilantro, as well as the juice of a lime, and then we'll blend this up once again and give it a quick taste. And if it's perfect like mine was, we'll transfer it to another dish, cover it, and let it cool in the fridge until about an hour until we're ready to plate. And while it does, we're next going to make some pico de gallo, which starts with three chopped vine ripened tomatoes to which we'll add a quarter of a chopped red onion as well as two chopped jalapenos followed by some chopped cilantro as well as the juice of one lime as well as some salt and pepper then we'll mix this all together and give it a taste after which I added a bit more cilantro and a bit more salt and pepper before covering this pico to store in the fridge while we work on the star of the show the fish for which we'll be using the same fish they use at James Beach Maki mahi, and the mahi mahi I bought came frozen, so I first had to thaw it out completely, after which you want to make sure that every piece is completely dry. And once the fish is all dry, we are then going to remove the skin before cutting it into smaller pieces, just as James Beach does at their restaurant, which I've actually had the pleasure of visiting a few times. And so we'll go ahead and remove the skin, a task which I gradually got better at as I went along, after which we'll cut the fish into smaller chunks, but before we 
we do, we want to remove this middle section, called the bloodline, from each piece of fish. So simply cut around and discard each bloodline. Now we're gonna cut this fish into little strips, almost like fish sticks. Do you like fish sticks? Yeah, I like fish sticks. And while I butchered the fish, I reserved any little scraps, which I later cooked up in a bit of water, to give to our dog, fittingly named Taco, who just so happens to look a lot like Sydney's dog in the movie, Anwar Sadat. Taco also happens to be my best friend. Well, him and Bailey, of course. Correct. And Hank Mardugas. Then, after we've butchered all of our fish sticks, we will marinate them in a simple combination of a little bit of avocado oil, as well as the juice of one lime, which we'll mix together real quick, before then adding a little bit of salt, as well as some freshly cracked pepper, in addition to some cumin, and finally a little bit more of that Mexican oregano. And now we're gonna marinate this fish in the fridge while we work on the final element of our fish tacos, the tortillas. Which, as Sydney explains, <laughs> make them in house it sets up the flavor for the whole dish <sighs> he's not kidding james beach really does have fantastic tortillas to make them we'll first need a big bowl to which we'll add three cups of all-purpose flour followed by this mix of warm water and butter which is simply one cup of water mixed with one stick or eight tablespoons of butter cut into smaller slices before putting that and the water into the microwave until it is melted and after it has melted we're going to mix in about a third of that warm butter mix at a time, gently mixing it by hand, and while we are aiming for a very sticky dough here, if after you've mixed in all the water and butter, the dough is still a bit too wet and sticky, simply add a bit more flour, and then we'll just knead that dough within the bowl, and while I do, I'll mention that this wonderful tortilla recipe comes courtesy of Salty Cochina Mexican Food, whose video and channel you can check out here. Then after about 5 minutes of kneading in the bowl, we should now have a nice smooth and sticky dough. Ball. And with this dough ball, we will now form 16 smaller dough balls, or bolitos, by placing our dough on the counter and pinching it between our thumb and forefinger, and then we want to twist and pinch off a little ball, like this one, before folding it back into itself and then rolling it between our hands to form the ball, and then we're just going to simply repeat this process until we have 16 smaller dough balls, after which we're going to take a little Crisco, or vegetable shortening, and we're going to first rub it on our hands, and then we're going to cover each dough ball with the shortening before placing them back in the bowl where they will rest, grabbing another bowl if necessary, and then after all the dough balls are covered in shortening, we're then going to cover these bowls and we're going to let those dough balls rest for 30 minutes. And while they do, I'll mention that the first time I tried this, I used a tortilla press. And while a tortilla press is a great device for making corn tortillas, it isn't exactly ideal for flour tortillas. Because, as you can see, the first time I attempted tortillas, the use of a tortilla press resulted in a tortilla that was way too small and way too thick, and was more like a pancake or a gordita. So after some research on my second go around, I opted to use a rolling pin to roll out each tortilla by hand, so now we'll start by flouring our work surface before setting our dough ball down, topping it with a little bit of flour, and gently rolling that dough ball out into a thin tortilla, rotating it every so often in an attempt to make it as even and circular as possible. Then we'll just spray our pan with a little bit of Pam, after which on medium heat we will cook our tortilla, flipping them when we see bubbles starting to form, whilst simultaneously rolling out our other tortillas. Meanwhile, Bailey used the tortilla press to slightly flatten each dough ball, which gave me a bit of a head start on rolling out the tortillas. And once our tortillas have a nice slight char on them and are cooked all the way through, we will put them in a tortilla warmer, then just repeat this process with your other tortillas until all of the tortillas are perfectly cooked, and in the meantime, I was also simultaneously making these mashed black beans, which I did in a similar fashion to the red beans and rice in our Popeye's chicken video you can watch here. And after our tortillas are all done, it's finally time to cook our fish, which we'll do in a lightly oiled cast iron pan, and this is really the easiest part of the process, because all we really need to do is get that pan nice and hot before placing our fish sticks in the piping hot pan 
in, and what we're really going for here is a slightly blackened look, getting a nice char on each side of the fish, but we only want to cook each piece for a few minutes, so as they don't overcook. If you see a piece of fish starting to break apart, immediately take it off the heat, and so just continue to cook your fish sticks. Then, once the fish is all grilled, we will now head on over to plate, and to plate our fish tacos, we will do so on a large platter, onto which we'll first plate our beautiful salsa verde into this little salsa dish, after which we'll next plate our black beans, adding a few scoops of those to the plate as well, which we'll then top off with a little grating of cotilla cheese. Next, we're gonna add some guacamole, which I prepared very simply in the exact same way I did in an episode fittingly about another one of Jason Siegel's favorite foods, our Erickson's seven layer salad episode you can watch here. Then, after the guac, we'll next plate some of our pickled vegetables, making sure to get a little bit of each kind, after which we'll then plate our gorgeous pico de gallo. Now it's time for the star of the show, our beautiful mahi-mahi. Stacking the pieces nice and neat, and last but certainly not least, our warm flour tortillas. Fold them like so, setting them down in the corner of the platter. Now it's time to make our root beer float, but I'm gonna do a slightly different take on the classic treat by making an entirely alcoholic root beer float by first starting with this alcoholic ice cream I found called Proof, which comes in several different flavors, so I had to make a choice between their cheesecake moonshine flavor and their coconut rum, ultimately deciding to go with the cheesecake moonshine. So I added a few scoops of our alcoholic ice cream to our glass, and next we're gonna add an alcoholic root beer called Not Your Father's Root Beer, which is actually a flavored malt liquor similar to a hard seltzer. And if alcohol isn't your thing, don't worry, Not Your Father's makes a cannabis infused root beer as well. Then to top it all, all off, we will add some alcoholic whipped cream, specifically the vodka infused whip shots, courtesy of the one and only Cardi B. So we'll spray some of our whip shots on top of our root beer float, and we can't forget our Pepperidge Farm pirouette straw, which contrary to what the movie says, actually isn't a straw, so I poked a hole through it with a regular straw so I could really drink from it. And at long last, our fish tacos with a root beer float is finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. So we'll start by building a fish taco, starting with one of those gorgeous tortillas, into which we'll add our perfectly cooked and flaky mahi-mahi, as well as some of our pickled veggies, followed by some of that salsa verde, in addition to a bit of that guac, as well as some of those cotilla topped black beans, and last but not least, we won't forget some of that beautiful pico de gallo, and then we'll wrap this taco up and take a bite, and... Hands down, best fish fish taco I've ever had in my life. But really, this is an incredible fish taco. It's truly exquisite, with every component here bringing something to the party. The mahi-mahi is cooked to perfection and works beautifully with that spicy, acidic salsa verde, the freshness from the guac and pico, those smoky, savory beans, that great bite from the pickles, and Sydney's right, those soft, warm, homemade tortillas really do set up the flavor of the whole dish. But how do our fish tacos? pair with a root beer float? Well, first of all, this root beer float is an absolute treat. You really can't taste any alcohol, which is both kinda awesome and somewhat scary. It really needs to be on a menu somewhere. And in terms of a pairing, it actually goes surprisingly well with these fish tacos. That sweet, creamy, vanilla-y taste complements the fish tacos in very much the same way that horchata conventionally complements Mexican cuisine. And so, while I didn't expect these two things to go together, they actually are a match made in culinary heaven. Yeah, I had a nice time, man. Those fish tacos are the tits. And without a doubt worthy of two big thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Please leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes will be included in a link in the video description. Follow us on all forms of social media, at Consuming Cinema, and don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from... Nope. And as always, thank you for watching.